Hi, I'm Sarah Tilly from Curious Maths. I'm a primary maths consultant based in London and I've been in education for over 20 years. This is my second video in my series of the Build It, Draw It, Write It, Say It approach to any kind of formal calculation. And in the first video, I explored it using columnar addition. So this video, I thought it would be the obvious thing to do would be to do columnar subtraction. So that's what I've done. So I'm thinking about how we can use a concrete and pictorial approach to support children when they move over to those more formal methods which sometimes seem rather abstract to them. So it's a really great approach and I really hope you find this video useful. For your information, here are the national curriculum objectives in England for teaching columnar subtraction. As you can see, the formal method is recommended in Year 3 and by the time children leave Year 6, we hope that they can subtract numbers with more than four digits using this formal method of columnar subtraction. And in this video, we will look at how we can use a build it, draw it, write it, say it with columnar subtraction. What's the point of a build it, draw it, write it, say it approach? Well, firstly, it gives children a hands-on experience and through being active mathematicians and doing the maths, they start to see the structure of subtraction, which gives them a deeper understanding. Using manipulatives and images will support with counting for those that need it. And also being active obviously helps children remember more because they've got something to hook their learning onto. In Key Stage 1, they do loads of practical and visual maths learning, so it makes connections with the previous learning. And if you capture the draw in the maths book or the build through a photograph, it supports that idea of them being revision guides. And there's so many reasoning opportunities. I recommend using a template to help structure the learning across the week. So it's a very simple template on screen, and you can make it with card and laminate it so that children can use dry white pens on the draw it and it can be reused. I, as far as the week goes, I would always start with a build it and it really depends then on my class and their understanding as to whether I go straight to a draw it on the next day. In some cases, I might do a build it and draw it together and in other cases, I might do a build it, draw it, write it, say it all on the same day and it might be that we just repeat that for a few days before we go on to problem solving and reasoning around subtraction. So which manipulatives should you use? Well, think about what they used last year. And if you used a build it, draw it, write it, say it approach for columnar addition, then you could use the same things. I like to give children a variety and then give them a choice and they can feedback which ones work best for them. If they need some help with counting still, Numicon would be advised because the holes will help them. And base 10 does the same thing because it's got markings on it, but it's organized in a different way. Place value counters have the place value marked on them and not as easy to count. And you could also use colour counters and give it a key. But all of these different resources lend themselves beautifully to a draw in the maths book. If you're going to do some work on columnar subtraction with exchange, it's important to do some work on understanding equivalence before. And that's the idea that a number can have the same value, but a different appearance. So you need to provide opportunities for children to partition numbers in different ways into tens and ones or hundreds and tens, etc. And there's an example on the screen for you to look at. And for visual support, you could consider using a pan balance because Numicon pieces are weighted. So you could actually put um, three tens and four ones on one side and two tens and 14 ones on the other and it would balance. You can also represent it really well through a bar model and make some real life links. I also recommend trying to do some work on exchange prior to them having to apply exchanging to this formal method. So you could give them out some bags which could have some place value counters or base 10 or colour coded cubes and children could count how much there is and then they represent it into a place value chart and you can make sure that there's a the right amount in the bag so they have to do some exchanging. You could also do the same activity with money. Another great game is Race to Zero, where children have a hundred base 10 and they have to roll a dice and subtract their total from a hundred. If you give them a template, they can represent their journey to zero with manipulatives and there'll be lots of exchanging to do. So you'll start your week with a build and this is a really important part of the build it, draw it, write it, say it approach. And you may start with a rather simple question, one which doesn't require exchanging. 
The important thing to remember about when doing a build with subtraction is that you only represent the first number, the largest number, the number that you're going to take something from. And the reason is, if I was to represent 36 next to this 58, then take the 36 away, I would still have 58 remaining. So just something to watch out for. So this is an example of a build for 58 using base 10. And for this question, what we would look at first is the ones column. I've got eight ones and I need to subtract six ones. I've got five tens and I need to subtract three tens. And what we're left with is our answer of 22. This build is using place value counters and you use it in exactly the same way. We would take our six ones from our eight ones and our three tens from our five tens. And we'll be left with our answer of 22. And here is the build with Numicon. And Numicon does work really well, but all you need to think about is, for most children, you might want to replace the actual Numicon 8 with eight of those things we call one, because otherwise it's a little tricky to take the six ones away. Just to note, what I've done here is I've stacked those five tens on top of each other. And from experience in the classroom, I found that children are quite happy with that. In fact, they quite like to count it up. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Five tens are 50. So once you've done some building, you might move over to the draw. And in some cases, it might be that you decide to do the build and the draw on the same day. So it just depends on how well your child at home is getting on and your children in your class. But as you can see here, I have drawn the 58 and I've remembered not to draw the 36 because I'd have exactly the same problem. So I've represented it here with base 10 and underneath with place value counters. And I'm trying to keep my images as similar as possible to the ones that they've been using. So to model it on this, I would do exactly the same thing as I did before. So I have 58 and I need to take away 36. Now, in most cases, I'd recommend a cross out because what that does is it lets you know whether they've done the maths right. Rubbing out can be not only a bit annoying in the classroom um, and challenging because you don't always have enough wipes, etc. But crossing out makes sure that we know what they've done. So I've crossed out six of those ones and now I've got five tens and I need to subtract three tens. So again, I can cross them through. And some children like to circle the bit they have left and that is your answer. And it would be the same model for the draw it. So when we start to move to the write it, you need to just check your calculation policy if you're a teacher in school to see if you use the expanded form and also if you're a parent if you just check the school's website or ask the, your child's class teacher they'll be able to tell you what the stages are. Um, in some cases some schools don't use the pluses there. I'm not sure that I like them much either. I understand why they're there um, but for some schools teachers say that they f children find this a little bit confusing so just check your policy and see whether you include it that way but many schools do include an expanded form before they move to the compact so when we're looking at the compact and it might be that I did this on day three it would just depend on my class so it might be on day three we've just moved to just a draw it and a write it perhaps because they say it comes all the way through the week so this is how I would um, use the language for the compact form of columnar subtraction got eight ones take six ones how many ones have we got left we have two ones I've got five tens subtract three tens how many tens have I got left I have two of those things we call ten 58 take away 36 equals 22 and if they're doing it in partnership with a draw it or even a build it they'll be able to check their answer and from doing this process and doing the build it and draw it, when they start to see this more abstract form, it will make a lot more sense. This is the build for a harder question. So as you can see, this question is going to require some exchanging. Now, again, checking your calculation policy or with your maths leader, um, whether you're a parent or a teacher in school, for the language that you use for exchange. So today I'm going to be using the language exchange but you can also use regroup so just find out what your school is doing so that you can be as consistent as possible. One thing we don't say however is borrow and that's really important because the term borrow comes from an old method that we don't use anymore so I'm still hearing it here and there in schools I go into so you know just making sure that we're using appropriate language. So as before 
we don't represent the second value. So I've got 234 represented. And I can look at my column subtraction here. And actually, by the time I get to this stage with children, I do often do the right at the same time as the build because I think it's really useful to show them that connection really clearly. So as always, we start in our ones column. We've got four ones and we need to subtract five ones. Now we can do it, so don't say we can't do it. We can do it, but that's gonna give us a negative number. We're not using negative numbers today, so we're going to exchange. And we're gonna to go to our tens column and we can see that we've got three of those things we call 10. We're gonna take one of those and exchange it for 10 ones. So we can actually model that at the same time because we have two tens left and we've exchanged that one 10 for 10 ones. So we add another 10 to that four and that would make our 14. So now we have 14 ones and we have to take five ones away. How many ones do we have left? We have nine ones remaining. So we've got two tens and we need to take two tens away. How many tens have we got left? We have zero tens remaining. We have two hundreds and we need to take one hundred away. How many hundreds do we have? One hundred remaining. And our build then will match our answer. So 234 subtract 125 equals 109. So it would look very similar if we use place value counters. Once again, we just represent the larger number in this calculation. I'm going to take the 125 away. And once again, you may like to do the right at the same time as the build. When the numbers get bigger, I think it's equally as important to still go through the build it, draw it, write it, say it method, especially if you've got more than one column which requires exchange. So with a number like this, 22,324 subtract 11,258, I definitely introduce it to my class or if you're a parent, your child at home through a build method or possibly even a draw. So I'm just going to show you what that would look like. So once again, I've only represented the larger number in this case, because I'm going to take 11,258 from this number. So, starting in, in the ones column, I've got four ones and I need to subtract eight ones. Well, that will give me a negative number, so I'm going to exchange. I'm going to exchange one of those tens for ten ones. which now gives me 14 ones. And I'm gonna take eight of those ones away. How many ones have I got left? I have got six ones. Next to the tens column, I have one 10 and I need to take five tens away. And that would once again give me a negative number value. So I'm in exchange, I'm gonna take one of those hundreds. So I have 200 left. And I'm, I'm going to exchange it for 10 tens, which is equivalent to 100. And I'm going to add it here. So now I have 11 tens and I need to take five tens away. I have six tens remaining. To the hundreds column, I have 200 and I need to take 200 away. Quite straightforward. I have zero hundreds remaining. I have two thousands. I need to take one thousand away. I have one thousand remaining. And I have twenty thousand or two tens of thousands. And I need to subtract one ten of thousand. How much do I have left? I have one tens of thousands left. So 22,324 subtract 11,258 equals 11,066. And it might just be that you don't need to do many of these because hopefully if the children in your class might have had some of the build it, draw it, write it, say it before, and they might not need too many examples and might not need to do too much practicing. But I still really recommend it as a really good starting point to make sure children understand what they're actually doing when they do a compact form. 
If you use the build it, draw it, write it, say it approach, you'll find that there's lots of opportunity to do reasoning because what you're providing children with is a visual or something concrete that they can unpick and build their learning on. So you could ask them to spot the mistake by unpicking a build or a draw to find the error. And you could also do some work on inverse because you could use the build and the draw to get children to investigate how they could check their answer is correct. If you're looking for virtual ma manipulatives, I recommend these two fantastic websites, Toy Theatre and MathSpot. And just to note that MathSpot has actually got an exchange button, so you can exchange down, which is so useful. That's how I would approach column loss subtraction using a build it, draw it, write it, say it approach. I hope you found it useful. Please check out my Build It, Draw It, Write It, Say It columnar edition video and I've got lots of other primary maths videos on my YouTube channel. Please like and subscribe and if you hit the bell for notifications then you'll know when I've uploaded a new video. Head over to my Curious Maths page on Facebook for more fun ideas. Thanks very much for watching.